Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop for a, a, a really a fun, simple little project. Last week uh, I showed you how to turn pendants. This week I'm going to show you how to turn a few simple beads to add add to it. If it's something you're interested in, keep watching. Uh, for you new new visitors, uh, please uh, hit the like button and, and make a comment. I want to know you're out there. Let's get started. You can pick up beads at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or other craft shops fairly inexpensively, but you might not be able to pick them up in the size you want or the color you, uh, wood you want. And if you're only going to make a couple, this is an easy way to do it. Uh, if you're not going to make a pendant or, or a necklace now, just follow this away. Come back and visit with you when you're interested. So here's how we turn a really simple one. I've uh, rounded this, uh, this piece, in this case a piece of walnut, but a piece of exotic wood would be very nice, paduk or ebony or what have you. Uh, I turned it round uh, to fit my collet chuck, you know, whatever size, a half inch, five eighths, heck, you can make them bigger or make them three quarters, but I've got this round, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to round over the tip. Of course, as I've shown in uh, previous videos, there's other ways to hold small pieces of wood on your, your lathe by uh, drilling a hole into a spindle scrap with a tenon on it and mounting it in a larger chuck. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and take a skew and just put just a tiny little divot in it to uh, help guide the, the drill I'm going to use. Uh, you can go to the trouble of putting using a, uh, uh, a Jacobs chuck if you like, but frankly that's overkill for this. Uh, I'm using a small hand drill. Uh, in this case, this is located right this is 1 8 inch and I use this for uh, fan pulls uh, because that's the appropriate size for a chain. Actually this may even be uh, 564. So actually I think I've got another one. You can make them different sizes. This one is actually uh, 9 64 which is a scotch bigger than a 1 8. This is the one I typically use for fan pulls because it uh, it allows a 1 8 inch chain to go through. So if you're using a little larger cord, maybe you want to use a little larger one. So, so we're going to use, we'll, we'll try this one. So while it's running, I brace my hand on the tool rest, just kind of support it a little bit. Now that we've got that uh, starter hole, just ease it in there, and then just press it on in. Get enough, far enough for about one bead. Don't go too much further than that, because you'll be making more beads. You can do it again. All right, now, depending on how wide the bead uh, you want, uh, you can kind of measure it. Let's see, like I said, I think this is a half inch. This might be a hair bigger. Uh, nah, by the time I sand it, this will be a half inch. So if I want to perfectly round or approximate a, a, a round bead, then I'd go ahead and leave that measurement, and I could just, just mark it with this sharp edge here. And now I know where it is. And I'm just going to use a skew to make a little V cut there to kind of define that bead. You know, and if you're not a big skew fan or a big expert, uh, I'd say get over it. At least learn how to make a V groove because uh, there's nothing that tool that'll do it as well as a as a skew. I think I can probably let's see if this light works any better. Maybe wash it, wipe it out a little bit. Okay, so we're simply gonna turn a bead, literally. Uh, Anchor the thing on top, you're going to lift the handle, you're going to rotate, and then swing the handle down in this trough, if you will. And don't go so far down that you jeopardize the integrity of this before we sand it. And now, uh, we're going to put just a little bit of, just a touch of sanding, sanding wax on here. Sanding, sanding paste, and then we're just going to quickly sand this thing up with a little 120, follow it up with a little 220, here's the 320, and you might want to sand with the grain. Get rid of any lateral scratches. Alright, now we're going to use a little abrasive paste just because uh, 
you know we had some videos a while back on how to use it and how to make it and I've gotten where I really like this stuff so we're going to use a little abrasive paste to get rid of those fine scratches it's fast it's easy that way you don't have to go up to uh, 400 600 and 800 this will this will get you to, to about 800 and this will work fine you can see what a fine shine this thing is coming up with grab another piece that's previously used just to finish polishing it put enough friction on it where it kind of sings to me just a little bit all right now I'm gonna throw that one away it's been used a couple of times and I'm gonna get a clean one and I want to get rid of any make sure I don't get any coloration and that looks clean so now I'm just going to go ahead and use a little friction polish uh, you know that this is not a really strong finish I suppose you could use CA I just don't like to make CA finishes but this does well and what the heck if they wear it a while it'll develop a little patina on their skin and I think it'll still look nice so we'll see rubbing it until that, that uh, alcohol flashes off and then we're going to ease up the tool rest and we will use the skew to part it off. I'm going to come back a little ways give myself some room to get down in there because I know I need that room. And then just ease it, ease it down. I can hear it getting close to that that hole. Back here just a little bit more on the other side. And hopefully, let's see if we can get this thing to drop right in my hand so I don't have to go chasing it across the floor. <laughs> I haven't caught one yet. <laughs> you know, I love my little magnetic holder when I drop a little nut, bolt, screw or something. I don't have to bend over. I don't know about you, you guys, but if you like me, you know, it gets harder and harder to bend over. We're just going to sand off the end here. Uh, that's normally not going to show. Put it, put it near the side against something and you'll do, do just fine. But I still gonna, I'm still going to going to take a little bit of friction polish. Just rub the edge of it just a little bit just to get it on there. And then and there, there's our bead. And it doesn't have to be perfectly round. It's going to be close enough. There's lots of ways you can turn them. You can turn them uh, two at a time. So you can try to get them matching like these two ebony beads. Parting these beads off may be a good uh, use of this shear spear I made a while back. Let's try it. Actually I've got a thin parting tool even smaller that might work better the last parts of the cut. But it, it, uh, it did enable me to get down in there pretty tight, so that was still a... Now that time I was using my, no my Nova Live Center with this stubby Morse taper and this uh, extended one quarter inch point. Uh, now I've manufactured one with a stubby point and a 5 32nd inch uh, center out of spring, spring steel. Uh, for the other side, I'm going to replace that with two steel pins uh, based on an article from David Reed Smith. I'll have a link to that in the show notes below. Uh, but they're, they're tapered. This is a, a stubby Morse taper. And I drill these bead blanks and part them off, you know, and, and batch them. And we'll, We'll see how this works. 
And I'm going to turn the speed up closer to 2,000. And let's see if I can't come up with a different design. And we're going to add some burn rings to this one. I don't like this. And I'm going to, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, friction polish on this that you might use on pens. Get a nice even coat on it. I've just got to make sure not to get my fingerprints on it until it cures for at least 24 hours. Making beads that are exactly alike can be a challenge, but they don't have to be perfect. And if you make enough of them, you just pick, uh, just pick uh, a couple that are close together before you string it on a necklace. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the bead being wedge-shaped, if that's your intent, as in this pair of Paduk beads that I haven't parted off yet. But if it's flat, the reason why, if you want it to be round, is you have, when you get in that last third, you've got to be swinging that arm out here. You just can't keep following straight down. Going straight down along that axis will not make it round. The only way you get better at wood turning is practice. Good practice will lead to good results. This is just a small sample of the uh, uh, variety of beads that, that I've turned. I'm sure yours can be even nicer. If you've got any tips on turning beads, be sure to share them not only with me but our entire community by just leaving a comment below. If you can't turn beads or don't want to turn beads, don't despair. You can. Buy a package of these things from Michaels for less than five dollars. You need supplies to put all this stuff together, like uh, cording or uh, bindings or or fasteners. Uh, you know, you can get those things at lots of different places online, as well as uh, Hobby Lobby, and and this is the stuff I picked up from Michaels. There's a technique called a necklace slip knot. I'll have. Uh, that allows you to adjust the size of the necklace, and I'll have a link to a uh, description on, in the show notes on how you can actually tie those two knots. If y'all missed the video that led up to this one on turning pendants, uh, there'll be a link link below. And just a reminder, I teach uh, lessons in my, my shop in Sewanee, Georgia. Uh, details are on my website. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.